Good morning. It's Friday, January 10th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, When the Road Gets Rocky, and our scriptures, Acts chapter 9. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, Go over to Straight Street, to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He's praying to me right now. I've shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem, and he's authorized by the leading priests to arrest everyone who calls on your name. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. Ananias was a believer, and God instructed him to go help Saul, the one who was seeking to destroy the church, putting believers in jail to rot, sometimes having them killed. Saul had just become a believer, and Ananias' mission was to go start the process of informing Saul just how much he was going to suffer as God's servant. (laughs) Some days, it just doesn't seem worthwhile to get out of bed. As a rule, you meet nice people at church. They're doing nice things and have a smile for you. It's not hard to understand why the thought develops that life as a Christian disciple is easy. Why would all those people be smiling unless it was so? Well, the problem with this thinking is that life is not easy no matter what your circumstances. Wealthy, poor, healthy, sickly, tall, short, skinny, fat, wise, simple, race, gender, sexual orientation, location, opportunities, or any other twist or quirk of nature, The common thread of every life is that sometimes it's a really hard, rocky road. Just ask Ananias and Saul. There are reasons we fall into the trap of developing a false view of life. It's usually expressed in the form of a lament such as, Oh, life for him or her is so easy. I wish I had their life. I deserve happiness. Money, sex, freedom from responsibility, a better hairstyle and complexion, or whatever, just fill in the blank, that would do it for me. Well, there are at least two reasons why we all long for that to be true. The first is self-delusion. We want an easy life, and so we hunt for signs of where that might happen for us. Now, it's a natural tendency to want better than we have. But when it becomes an obsession, we're prone to accept the self-lie that we deserve whatever makes us happy. Theologically, that is the worst kind of lie because it makes us in charge of our life, calling the shots, captain of our ship, master of our fate. And that places us squarely in opposition to reality. It is God who is sovereign. God is our creator, and as such, we worship him, not our plans and desires. A second reason is preachers. There are many preachers, frankly, whose message tends to support the self-happiness delusion over the rocky road reality. A simple check of the most popular media megachurch moguls unveils the base of the message constantly, which goes this way. Here's how to manipulate the circumstances to get what you want from God. It's called many things, but the prosperity gospel an oxymoron if everyone existed, considering Jesus said, blessed are the poor. The prosperity gospel is a life pathway to serve self, not follow Jesus. Preachers that feed this poison to God's people will suffer God's judgment. For you today, life's pathway choices, delusion, 
or discipleship. The road is going to be rocky either way, but I'd rather follow the one who laid out the road in the first place. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.